Welcome back. So this is likely my last video on the Hockey Channel for today. Uh, I, I may may put one up on the Entertainment Guy later. I haven't decided yet. But uh, I wanted to, to do one last news video before tomorrow. I remember 9 a.m. is when the, the free agent frenzy gets started. We've got the live stream set, I believe, a little bit before that. I think it's 8.45 we've got it set for. I do expect there to be some leaking of contracts coming out before that. But it's nowhere near what it was back when they had the the four or five days where they could actually negotiate a contract before July the 1st. And we just, we knew where everybody was going, how much they were going to get. And free agent day was boring. I prefer it this way. Now, 112 players did not get qualifying offers who are restricted free agents and now become unrestricted free agents as a result. Uh, and according to Cap Friendly, that's the highest number they've tracked outside of 2016 when they had 113 players that were not given qualifying offers. So off to mark, it goes 112 guys who may not have or may have expected to end up being UFAs anyways. Uh, the Seattle Kraken did something today that I like, so I'm wearing Seattle. I should have worn Coachella Valley, shouldn't I? Uh, because Joey Decord had a great run for Coachella Valley, and he was very impressive in that final. Hershey ended up winning it, but Decord was very impressive, and I kept saying, I think he's earned the right to get a shot at the backup job. And now he gets a two-year extension from Seattle for two or $1.2 million per season, so $2.4 million in total. 26 years of age, and again, I think he's earned the right to compete for that backup job, and it's nice to see. It looks like that's a one-way deal, too, so excellent job for, by Joey Decord, uh, playing his way to a new contract, so congratulations to him for that. Uh, so on the qualifying offer front, there were some teams that, that qualifying offers weren't known for, and so I've got a couple of names on the board, just as a couple of notables. Uh, Malgan was not given a qualifying offer by Colorado. Solid fourth-line option for a team out there. Uh, I think he'll be a good pickup wherever he ends up going. Uh, Costin was not given a qualifying offer from Detroit either, which kind of surprises me. So we'll see if Steve Eiserman works out a deal with him. Not given a qualifying offer doesn't mean that they're not going to sign with the teams that let them go to market. But uh, it, it does mean that those players can field calls from all the teams, right? So you may end up with a situation where a GM wants to keep guys around. Because I've seen that today where some of the guys weren't given qualifying offers. Where fans are saying, well, yeah, but the GM wants to keep those players. But it doesn't always work that way when they go to market. Sometimes you're you're dealing with numbers with one team and then you get a phone call from your agent saying, hey, so these guys are offering you way more money and you have a better chance to win. Or, you know, you have a chance to be on the ground floor of this, this good young team. So either way, uh, we'll see what happens with Cost and we'll see what happens with Melgan. Uh, so Chris Johnston reports that progress is being made by the Ottawa Senators on an extension for Brandstrom. Brandstrom, not quite the defenseman yet that Ottawa had envisioned he would be when he came over in the Mark Stone trade. But uh, he's a young defenseman. There's still the top six potential there. I don't know about top four, but he could be a, he could be in their top six next year, absolutely. Uh, and I mean as a regular and, and a solid contributor. And there's there's split opinions on Brandstrom and his, his uh, you know, the amount of Potential he still has left, but I got my fingers crossed for him just a little bit. Uh, one thing I added to the board, because it is the eve of JT Miller's contract extension going in. I was informed that there was no way it would be on the books. The Canucks have find a way to trade it. They haven't. And now it becomes a situation where he doesn't go unless he wants to. So JT Miller's contract kicks in tomorrow. So does the no movement clause. And I've heard nothing about the Canucks trying to trade him because I think it's fans and media trying to trade him. I don't think the team has any interest in trading him or else they wouldn't have given him this contract. Uh, so it's an $8.5 million signing bonus in year one. So he actually gets a million dollars in salary. His actual money this year is $9.5 million. His cap hits $8.5 million. Uh, and then there's a $5 million signing bonus both in years two and three. So it's possible that somebody will say on July the 2nd, hey, now that the Canucks have the $8.5 million signing bonus done with Miller, they could move them, and then it's only a million dollars salary. Somebody somewhere may very well say that, but I, I really don't think that's going to happen. He has the no movement clause. I think Miller really likes it in Vancouver, and I think it speaks well of Vancouver. That there are players who are willing to sign long-term deals, and hopefully uh, Pedersen's name gets added to that list as soon as possible as well. Uh, I wanted to throw this in here too because I've seen a lot of confusion about the buyouts. I've seen a lot of confusion about some of the trades that have been made. Players with uh, actual caps, like cap hits beyond this year, uh, they they end up not being worth nearly as much. One thing, Elliot Friedman's been very clear on this for months, for about a year now. 
that players with term, GMs don't want them. So they're getting guys are getting bought out because no GM wants them. Uh, the GM of the team that has the player is saying, we would like to move this player. We know we need to make changes. So, for instance, Duchesne, I guarantee you, Barry Trotz, David Poyle, calling teams, trying to see if there's any interest. And at that cap hit, it wasn't there. Maybe they didn't want to absorb cap money and then watch him go. So, like, you know, retain 30% and trade him. So they just, they go through the buyout. The buyout's a painful process, but they're going through it. Uh, and again, there are players who likely there just wasn't any market. Blake Wheeler being an example, there likely wasn't any market for him at that cap hit. Teams will grab him at a lower cap hit. The Jets probably didn't want to retain either. So that's what's been happening, and I'm not really surprised by it, but I know there's some fans that are taken aback by it as well. Uh, and then there's the, the RFAs becoming UFAs. There's arbitration rates that teams don't want to deal with. There's qualifying offers that are too high for what the teams want to deal with. So then once they don't give the qualifying offers out, they circle back. They're probably negotiating the whole time anyways and saying, look, we'd like to bring you back. Just that qualifying offer is not where we want to be. And then you negotiate from there, right? So we'll see what happens. How many players end up sticking with teams that are letting them go to market? Because that always happens too, where uh, we get into free agent day and then, oh, actually this guy has stayed with the same team. He's not going anywhere. So we'll see how many times that happens tomorrow. I had to put this in here because the money is absolutely insane in the NBA. And I just wanted to do this because we're on the eve of the NHL's free agent period and hearing how greedy the players are. Fred Van Vliet uh, from the Toronto Raptors been signed by the Houston Rockets three years, $130 million. $43 million a year for Fred Van Vliet. So this is just one thing to keep in mind that, yes, you know, the the, the number one paid player in the NHL is pretty well off. But then you compare it with, with money in the NBA, with Major League Baseball, with the NFL that's where the money gets kind of silly. So I just, I wanted to throw that up there. I don't think we'll ever see an NHLer signing a three-year deal for that money. But one thing I will say, and one thing that's being said a lot on the eve of unrestricted free agency, we could see a lot of players signing one-year deals because of the fact that the salary cap goes up a lot next year. So because the salary cap is, is projected to go up by $4 million at the very least next year, there will likely be a lot of players that sign for, you know, a one-year deal. Maybe they sign for less with the idea that then next summer they can really cash in. Uh, one player that will not be cashing in, sadly, has called it a career today, uh, Marcus Nudevara. So he spent the whole season on injured reserve. He was on the season, open injury, season opening injury reserve, I think, for San Jose. Signed a contract there, never played a game. Uh, hip injury is what took place there and has forced him to retire. He played one game in 2021-2022 with Florida. Didn't play a single game this year. He ends up retiring with 275 games played. 17 goals, 54 assists, 71 points. Of course, majority of his career was spent in Columbus. That's where he had his best years as well. But that's the thing. Hip injuries, depending on the nature of the hip injury, it can be career ending. And that's why uh, I would think Patrick Kane probably not getting signed to anything tomorrow. And any other player dealing with a hip issue like Pugliarvi that I talked about earlier today, very, very unlikely to get a contract unless they show they've progressed really well and they're in good shape and they're going to be able to play in the National Hockey League at or near the level they were at before. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.